Welcome to Hacking the Universe with Aaron Worley and Philip Worley. We're so excited to be here with you today, aren't we, babe? Yes, yes we are. This is going to be amazing. Oh my gosh, we have so much to talk about. Do you want to talk about it? Should we do it? Yeah. Okay, so we went to 4th of July mm. festivities in our town, which the were fireworks. actually on the 3rd of July. So Sunday evening. Um, yeah, we went to the fireworks. We we parked forever away because we've learned in previous years that if we park in the main parking lot dedicated to it, it'll take like four hours to leave. Mm -hmm. So we were so clever and so smart. We parked far, far away and we walked. We had yeah, this... neighborhoods. So. Yeah, yeah. It, worked out. it worked out. Yeah, it worked out really good. We were like out of there in two yeah. minutes once we finally got back to our car. Yeah, but that's yeah. not that's not what it's about. That's not. I'm, so, I'm like so giddy. I can't wait to talk about this. It's so exciting. Okay. So, so we get to the firework venue. We walk there. We get there. The kids are in the stroller and we get out. We're setting out our picnic blanket and everything. We pop popcorn. We brought marshmallows that yeah, melted. Those melted in the color. We had those really cool um, glow necklaces and glow bracelets that I always wanted when I was a kid, but I never got them. Our kids got them. That was really fun. I got them at the dollar store. Yeah, I got them at the dollar store. Well, I, I was prepared. Prepared dad. <laughs> yeah, it was really cool. They were so excited. Um, they're still playing with them, although there's no glow left. So we are looking south because that's where the fireworks are going to be. Yeah, immediately south. Yeah, directly south. And so they haven't started yet. We're just hanging out and we're looking at the moon because the moon is directly south, like right where the fireworks almost, are. Almost, just be. a little bit east, but almost directly south. Okay, yeah. well, no, but I'd say that's directly south. Okay. Okay. Pretty darn close. Yeah, direct. it wasn't exactly where the fireworks were, okay. but I mean, they were both pretty yeah. fully south. Okay, so that's the moon, and we're looking at the moon because for the first time ever, Phil and I see it's just like a sliver of a moon, but that's illuminated, but you can see a whole like dark ball. Yeah. So, so the moon is a crescent shape, lit up crescent shape, you know, it looks like a smile, but then we notice, but we can see the outline of the whole moon, the whole round moon i've never seen this before i don't know if you've ever seen this before i've never noticed it before so we can see the crescent moon all lit up and then the rest of the moon is still we can see the rest of the moon too the outline of it and we even took a picture with our phones which are just cell, cell phones so it was really <laughs> grainy and everything but even on the grainy phone picture you can see yeah. the outline of the rest of the moon and i've never yeah. seen that before i'm like no i've never heard of that you could see the rest of the moon, even though it's just like, like yeah. less than a quarter of a moon, like maybe a fifth of a moon. It's lit up. Yeah. So we're like, this is really strange. So we're staring at this thing. So like, we're really talking <laughs> about the moon, checking it out. We keep looking at it throughout the night. We're also like just wondering. Just blown away by this. Like how, and we're like, anybody else noticing Yeah, we're like this? looking at everybody else. Is anybody else staring at the moon? Yeah. Nobody else seemed to notice it before. <laughs> and so... The, the fireworks finish. There's the grand finale, you know, and then everybody gets up to go, you know, and we're like, Oh, wait, wait, can I say what? though first? Like I couldn't even focus on the fireworks because I just kept staring at the moon. I'm like this is a, like, what's going on? Never like, so that's, it was mind blowing. So we're there. How long is the, the show, like an hour? Or yeah, plus? I think we're probably there. And the moon's hour. still there in the same spot. Well, where would right? it go? Exactly. It's the moon. So it just we've been out. looking at it the whole time. It's there. It's, it's almost directly south. And then we pack up. Yeah. <laughs> so we pack up and we're leaving with the crowds, everybody else, you know, and we're kind of rushing, trying to get above the front of the crowd. So we're not like stuck behind everybody. I'm, he's, okay. he's She's fast. keeping up. He's fast. And, <laughs> he's pushing that stroller. Yeah, like so we're like, business. we're whipping out of there. I'm trying to get out of there as fast as we can. So we're not stuck and like, well, it's very late for our yeah. kids. Yeah. <laughs> so, cause we want to get home and get the kids in bed. And so we get out of the park and we're like three minutes, two minutes, five minutes. Two I don't minutes. know. Okay. We two got out of there really fast. And then we're walking down the sidewalk, the road, which is going, the, the road runs north, south. So we're walking north now. 
And all of a sudden, Erin stops me and she hits my arm. She's like, Should you see this? I'm like, <laughs> what? I'm like, what? She's like, oh my God, you see this? I'm like, and she points to the moon directly to the west. And she's like, I'm like, yeah, we've been looking all the night. And I'm like, wait a minute. It took him a minute. It took to me a minute what... to realize what she was freaking out about. The moon had moved. It was almost directly south, and now it's directly west. It had, and we'd left like three minutes ago. So it's like, like two minutes. Like it that. Was two minutes. Because I had looked back after, yeah. when I was sort of like hightailing it to mm. keep up with you and the kids in the stroller, I, I glanced at it. So it was literally two minutes yeah. since my last glance, and it was directly south to when it's now directly yeah, west. walking down the sidewalk and that's it's west and i'm like how does the moon move like that i know it sort of moves but not like that it doesn't go from south to west and snap of a finger so it's like it teleported it just moved like this is like blowing our minds like what's going on and i was because i was so fascinated like i said i I barely saw the fireworks because I was my eyes were glued to the moon. It had my focus, and I was I was like measuring where because there's a there was a lake directly in front of us, like not a lake but a, a, a man made lake. So yeah, it's like a pond. It's, it's not big, but anyway, there's a lake directly in front of us, and it has some um, water fountains within it. And so I was measuring with the water. So between me, the water fountain, and the moon, was it moving at all? I was just, I don't know. I was so intrigued, right? And it wasn't moving. So it's not like it just quickly drifted. It it was stationary. And then two minutes later, it had moved to the west. What? Okay. Yeah. So, this is the end of the story. No, there's more. And it's so, like, wait, you're going too fast, more. babe. You're going too fast. We got to go okay. back to the fireworks. Well, okay. There's more. There's more. And then I we asked I am, and then we, I'm still going to tell you all that, too. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we got to go back to the fireworks. What did we buy for the fireworks? Because last year when we did the fireworks. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Last year this when we did the fireworks, the fireworks, the the bug, the mosquitoes we bought, we brought were bug spray. so thick that it was horrible. And we had just done it. There's fireworks close to our house. I so don't we had know been very close what to our the house. summer was like for you last year. But where we are, the mosquitoes were like swarms. It was the worst. It was like, we'd they're ever like clouds seen. of mosquitoes. There's so many well, we, mosquitoes. We get last a lot year. of mosquitoes here in general, yeah. but this last year was so we're, by we're in Indiana, far the worst. Near Chicago. And yet last year was the worst mosquitoes I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm from Michigan, which we get bad mosquitoes in, in Michigan. But I've never seen anything like this like last year. It was like a whole neighborhood we go for walks and like yeah. we'd be swarmed with them they were just like clouds of yeah we mosquitoes. were talking about it last year like and we're like what is going on this is really on. really yeah. weird we've never seen so many mosquitoes in our entire life it's crazy and then this year there's no mosquitoes we can't there weren't them. any mosquitoes okay so we're doing yeah. the fireworks and we hear other people spraying their bug repellent their deep whatever, yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 they're whatever spraying their bug repellent and we're like and that made me realize when I heard them spraying yeah. it, we didn't have to spray ours. No. There's no bugs. And There's so none. then there was a spotlight there um, close to the ground because we were at a park. And we went and looked at the spotlight. There were three bugs you could and see in the spotlight. It's, pitch, it's dark outside. Three bugs, not mosquitoes. They were bigger. There were no mosquitoes. There were no mosquitoes. And there's barely a few bugs at all. And then we I started wondering, am, are we in a slightly this. different vibration or dimension than other people around us? Are they experiencing yeah. bugs? Is that why they're spraying the, the bug spray? So I was wondering that. I'm like, what's going on? Then I'm looking at the moon and I'm like, what's going on? And I want you to go get that book. We'll pause the oh. show for a second. Let's see if I can find it. Um, oh, how do I? Is it in here? Okay, it's gone. It is? Okay. Yeah. All right, so... I picked up this this kid's book at the thrift store like a week ago or something like that. And because we the kids love these Disney books, these old ones are out probably Disney books. So I picked this up and it was yesterday. So it was the fifth. My kids grabbed this. They wanted me to read it. We hadn't read it before. And so I'm reading this to them. And so this is the fourth. We saw the outline of the moon. We've never seen that before. And then the fifth, my kids pick out this book we haven't read before. And it's the weirdest picture. 
it's the moon. You can see the rest of it. Outlined. That's exactly Just exactly how what it we to saw. Us. And there's another page of it. Too. And there's another page with two more times. It shows this Wait, with the moon. It. Got it. Uh, yeah. You see, so, on both of them, I can. There we go. There. So, I think it's. Okay. <laughs> it's. I'm like. I've never seen the moon depicted that way before in a picture. Have you ever seen it depicted that way? Oh, is this like a Mandela effect, Phil, where we yeah. went into a new dimension where this is how the moon's always been? We should and look then, up other pictures yeah, of the yeah, moon. Yeah. I'm like, are they going to show? Yeah. And I was like, is that? I don't know if you've ever heard of Mandela effect, but that's an interesting Google search if you ever want to do a Google search for something really weird. Mandela effect. Um. But yeah, is that what's going on? I don't know. This is weird. Because I'm like, the next day, I see this. I've never seen this before. It's really weird. We better look at some other moon pictures. Yeah, and see if okay. like it's switched or something. So, we walk home. And as... So, we're walking back to the car. So, again, there's no mosquitoes out here. And yeah. just as a side note, the last two nights, there haven't been any mosquitoes either. No. There's no mosquitoes. We, we went out by the street light, by our street... Yeah. There's no mosquitoes. We were not looking for mosquitoes. We can't yes. find them. Like, I, I keep have, going. The I've last like two nights, two I'm bug like, where bites are the mosquitoes? Summer. And then I realized like, at some point, I guess I should stop looking for the mosquitoes and say, I'm so grateful there yeah. are no mosquitoes. This is wonderful. Cool, no mosquitoes. No. But it's like that. You get what you first... want, and you're freaking out about it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. Like the first, the at first it was like, oh, what do I do? You know, it, it was so different so quick. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I've been saying. I'm ready to see things as they really are but then when it happens yeah, it's like, ah, like ah. it took well, me a few know, days to like <laughs> to like <laughs> to um embody all of this moon business it took me a few days to yeah like yeah to because yeah so so we're walking back to the car and i start asking i am and I, I get all the goods on what this is so we'll get to that in a minute okay. what's going on with the moon so we go we get in the car we drive home and it could have been more than like 15 minutes since we saw it to the west. Well, maybe. I don't think it was that Maybe long. not even that. Ten Probably minutes. maybe 10 minutes. We got to the car. It wasn't very far. We drove home, which wasn't very far. So probably 10 minutes, 15 at most. And we're driving down our street that we live in, and it runs um, east-west. So we're driving from the east-west. So you would think the moon would be directly west. And it points out to me again, I'm driving. She's like, oh my God. And she points to the moon and I look up there and it's not to the west anymore. It's moved. It's now to the northwest. Moved again. We're like, it's been like 10 minutes. How did it teleport again? So this isn't the end of it. It's even <laughs> more bizarre. Okay. So we're like, what the hell? I moved again. It's so like, First, we're thinking maybe, maybe there's a chance we were crazy and it wasn't to the south. No, we know it was no, to the south. No, we weren't though, Phil. It was like for the first time, this was so clear. Yeah, was we so literally, obviously. we could, there was no room for doubt. But then it happens a there third no time. And it's like, doubt. okay, it really this incredible. is the third time. We've been paying this, it's moved to the west, it was south, now it's west, now 10 minutes later, it's the northwest. It doesn't make any sense. It's like it's like it's messing with us. It's, it's like, like it knew that we were sitting there talking about it, so it was like gonna give us a show. So that's like, hey, what it was like. Here you go. Yeah. So we go into the house, and then um, Leo falls asleep, so she takes mm -hmm. Leo to bed. Maddie wants to do fireworks because we got some fireworks to to shoot off. So I take Maddie, our five year old, outside to the park to the driveway. And we do these fireworks and we come back in. So it's been maybe an hour. And then Maddie asks you to go outside, right? So they go outside together. And Aaron's yelling at me, Phil, you got to come out oh, here. She wanted to, because she heard us talking about the moon. So she wanted to go look at the moon again. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's why? Yeah. Okay. And she made me write down it because we were talking about this and she was asking us questions. So she made me write it down. I was like, I'll write it down, but I'm not going to forget it. So yeah. <laughs> I wrote it down for her. So anyway, we go out there and we're looking for the moon because she wants to see it. She's a, she's like, oh, did the moon move again? And then she has a she has a show. She watches teeny pings or tiny pings. And one teeny of them pings, is a, yeah. a moon ping. 
and Moon Ping controls the moon. Yeah. So she so was she's hoping concerned about she's hoping that Moon Ping is okay. So she oh. wants to go check on Moon Ping. So we're out there and we can't find the moon. The moon is She called there. me out there. She's like, the moon's gone. I'm like, what? <laughs> so we go out there and where it was to the northwest, it's gone. And it's, it's not cold. in any other direction either. And we're looking, we can't find it in the sky. So I'm like, maybe it's some, moved to some spot where trees covering it. So I'm walking around the neighborhood, across the street, down the streets, looking at the sky, trying to find this moon. It's gone. It's disappeared. I'm like, the moon's disappeared. <laughs> it was south, then west, then northwest. And an hour later, it's gone. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, we're we're living in a matrix or something. Well, it's like, like I am told us there was so, going to be a show. Yeah, you know, like, it's like clearly this is real. To see. <laughs> we think it's real. If not, we got moons disappearing. You know, our five year old <laughs> Maddie says to us, "But moons can't just disappear." <laughs> so our five year old is watching this, going, "This doesn't make sense." She's like, "Where's the moon?" She's like, "Moons can't just disappear." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, I don't want to tell you. I barely can. Moon, so. Yeah, well, yeah. So, of course they We're always saying, Moon King's okay. <laughs> He's coming back. okay, yes. Moon King's okay. So, yeah. so I'm asking, I am, what's going on? This is when we're walking. So, this is when the moon had just gone from south to west, and we're walking back to our car from the fireworks. And I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? And you're like, what's going on? And, but it was so clear that like, we had been sitting there for 45 minutes to an hour, staring at the moon and talking about mm -hmm. it. And it was facing South. And then yeah. two minutes later, it's facing West. Like it was so clear. And like, we were not, we don't drink. We were not inebriated in any way. It was just, it was just, we, we don't clear. use any this substances. Happens. I guarantee you this we were on shrooms or something. <laughs> this like they're on. Some no. <laughs> This, this just happens. We take vitamins. <laughs> we do take a lot of vitamins. Yeah, we really love our vitamins. Highly recommend vitamins. Um, by the way, I just saw a thing that there's a vitamin P. What? A vitamin P? Then it, well, it, then, it, but then it wasn't. I saw that video today, but it's not really a vitamin. It's actually energy. And I can't remember. P, I can't remember. what it, Anyway, it's not actually a vitamin. It's simply, we need the earth's energy fields as humans. And so then they were talking about this video about how all spacecraft, U.S. spacecraft and Russian spacecraft has always been equipped with this vitamin P, which is just a similar um, energy field that the earth has so that when you leave earth's gravitational orbit or whatever, um, that you will still have that, which struck me as kind of funny because I actually do not think that these spacecraft are going anywhere. Um, so, well, so I'm like, well, why are they, you know? I guess, well, yeah, they're going. Okay. But that's not what we're talking about today. Maybe we could talk about that another yeah. time. That'd be really fun because there's, there's a lot to be said there. So anyway, so I'm like, what's, <laughs> what's going on? Right. Clearly. It was just south and now it's west. What's going on? And so I start getting all this information really, really fast. And I'm trying to say, tell it to Phil. And Phil's trying to run with the stroller still. And I'm trying, we're trying to, like, do this. And so um, basically what it what I am was telling me is that the false matrix is so far open right now that we are literally seeing what's always been true. But the false light matrix has been hiding it from us. So it's always been true that the moon has is a is a ball and it you know it doesn't matter how much um, light is visible on the moon you will see if unless it's a full moon you will see the the black ball of it the that's, the rest yes of it, that's that always picture. right so that's always been true it's just the false light matrix was projecting a different version of the moon into our experience for us to see. So we didn't see the truth of the moon. And then the other thing is that the moon is a spacecraft and it is the one of these spacecraft and there's more than one, one of those spacecraft from planet one. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, like I can even tell like me speaking this right now, I'm like, I have, Fear coming up, like, oh, I shouldn't 
shouldn't say this. This isn't like, oh, people, people aren't going to want to hear this. Right. And I just have to move beyond that. I have to look at what's the other side of fear. The other side of fear is excitement. And so if I can move myself into excitement, I move through the fear and I can do the thing that I'm here to do. So that's a little trick. If you're afraid of something, can you get yourself excited about what would happen if you shared it and the best things happened? So that's a little trick anyway. So, um, now that the false light matrix is, is so cracked open, or at least was that evening, we are seeing things as they always were. And we're seeing the spacecraft that's literally teleporting. Well, not quite, right? Because I am said it was yeah, really important. It. And I couldn't see why when we talked about the history of the world and the Soul Star Energetics Masterclass. If you haven't seen that, I will link it down below because it tells you the history of the world and why the moon might be a spacecraft and what in the world planet one is and all of that good stuff. I highly recommend checking that out. But so we are, we are seeing the moon that night as it actually is a spacecraft that zips around. Now, the false light matrix has just illuminated a moon that wasn't a real moon. It was just a sort of a vision, a veil of, of a moon. So that if we ever accidentally saw through the matrix, we would see essentially the same moon and not ask too many questions, right? It would just be like, oh, it's just the moon. But in reality, beyond the false light matrix, that moon is zipping around all over the place. And just like we were told, in the Soul Star Energetics Masterclass with the channeled history of the world that I did, that Planet One's spaceships, it looks like teleportation, but it's not actually. They're just moving so fast, like that to the human eye, it seems Our like teleportation. Seems that way. Right. So they're zooming around up there. And yeah, that's that's essentially it. So it's it's a good thing that we are seeing, beginning to see more and more beyond the matrix. And wherever you are on the experience of this, the only thing that's asked of you is that when you're shown something that doesn't make sense based on everything that you have learned here in false matrix land of earth, that you be open to saying, well, what if I'm not crazy? What if this is true? If you can do that, if you can be open to saying, well, what if this is true? you'll keep being shown more. But if you say that's too much, I can't handle it. The moon is not allowed to move in this bizarre pattern. And you just sort of retract back into what you know and try to ground yourself in. This is what I know about the physical world, which is very much probably false light matrix programming. Then your guides and your inner self say, okay, this being isn't quite ready for the next level yet. So we're going to have to go, go slower, drip that information in slower. So the more you can take a deep breath and choose to say, well, what if I'm not crazy? What if I'm really experiencing this right now? The more information is going to be given to you. Now, everybody has this opportunity right now to open up and receive huge amounts of information, but you have to be able and willing to hold it all, which means the sadness that goes along with it. It took me a few days of kind of saying like, oh my gosh, it's true that this world isn't what we think it is. And that felt sad. I had to move myself through it, but I've chosen that. I've chosen to hold all of it, which is why I keep getting more. So you have to go through the stages of grief because yeah, you're losing, about you're losing, you're losing something. You're losing what you thought the world was. Yeah. You're finding out that's not real. So, and whether you lose something like you lose a loved one or you lose what you thought the world was you you, yeah. you have to grieve you have to go through those stages of grief you look that up those i can't remember what they really are do you remember what they are like, well first there's denial. denial this isn't happening this isn't real yeah. i don't believe this and then and there's anger. and then yeah so they they don't necessarily come yeah. in this order but often they do so there's anger right this isn't fair this is not fair this isn't happening i'm angry this makes me upset why was i lied to Right. Or why do why I waking somebody up can sometimes this? be a little scary or dangerous because they can get angry. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's what de then there's depression. And then there's no, not yet. So usually it's, it's bargaining that oh, bargain after right, anger. Bargain, yeah. You you're like, OK, don't I don't want to have to see this. Can I just have this thing I want? 
but not have to see this. So like in this instance, it would be, can I just have a super clear intuition and inner voice, but not have to see the bad things? Can you just show me the good stuff? So, so that would be bargaining. Whereas like what I just said is we have to be willing to hold it all. To you want to, if you yeah. want to receive the information, you got to get yeah. it all, even the yeah. So that's stuff. bargaining, and then sadness, right? Okay. If you so, if you're a lot of people will turn back and say, "I can't handle this," at denial, or at anger, or even at bargaining, they'll bargain themselves into, "I I choose that I I get to have the super clear intuition and not have this." But in fact, we have to make it through all the stages to acceptance, to accept this exists, and that's okay that I can, I'm stronger than all of it. I can hold all of it and I can draw light into my body that will begin to change my experience. And as that light blossoms out, it will begin to change the experience of the world around me. And as that light grows bigger and bigger and bigger, it will completely transform the world around me. And as other people are lit up by my light and I'm lit up by their light, the whole vibration frequency of our planet and of our earth experience transforms. So that's what's on the other side of walking yourself through these stages of grief. So there's sadness and then there's acceptance. I accept that this exists. And the hardest thing is walking yourself through those the first few times. After you've done it a few times, you start to understand it's just a process and there's nothing wrong with it. Hey, there's one more thing I want to talk about. Okay. So I saw on social media, and I've seen this so many times, it's the stages of consciousness scale. Oh, boy, I wish, maybe, you know what, we'll have the beautiful assistant Gabby, we'll have her throw it up here so you guys can, so she, so that'll be here. We're going to be talking about it, and you're going to be looking at it. <laughs> High tech look stuff. At, yeah, look at Aaron ass. and Phil. They know what they're doing. Trust that Gabby can throw that in there. value. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so the stages of consciousness scale is essentially um, levels of consciousness scale. So it's essentially like at the bottom is shame and all of these emotions or experiences you don't want to experience. So essentially shame, guilt are at the bottom, a little bit higher up is anger. And then moving up, you go all the way up to peace, joy, love, enlightenment. Okay. So I take issue with this in a Mm -hmm. major way. It's perpetuating all of those old false light, light matrix ideas around enlightenment, that an enlightened individual is in that um, top of the mountaintop enlightenment state all day, every day. And if they're not, they're not doing it right. I want you to tell me about, because you grew up in a religious household. Mm -hmm. So, so you read the Bible and stuff and knew about stories. Whereas like, I didn't know anything like at all. So, (laughs) so tell me what what Jesus did. What what did you mean? Like what, like everything? Like what did he do when something wasn't fair? Did he just like hum and say, Oh, okay. So we're going that. Okay. Um, no, he didn't do no- nothing. He he stood up for what he believed was, was right. You know, he didn't do it in a violent way, and, and except except for when the money changers were in the temple changing money. That's when I think he grabbed like a stick or something and he, and he kicked them out. He was mm-hmm. very angry. Um, but other than that, um, um, he he utilized like non-resistance. Or he, he taught non-resistance, which is like, um, if, if they're you, telling you to do it, like don't be violent, but say I'm not going to do it. I'm going to stand up for what's right and not do it. But um... okay, the point. <laughs> okay, good job. That, was, that was great. That was great. That's perfect. But but so... he didn't just advocate people uh, sit around and hum and not do anything. They, they were taking action to create the world they wanted to create, but they were doing it in a peaceful way, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and then he demonstrated And Gandhi that. did the same thing, right? Gandhi. Gandhi's a great so, example. So these people, these enlightened individuals were not, not willing to see the darkness. They were happy. To they faced see the, the darkness. darkness. They faced it. So there are two schools of thoughts out there. Now real light faces the darkness. False light matrix ignores the darkness and doesn't want to see it. We see a lot, a lot of these so-called white people 
trying to deny that the darkness exists and that, that the evil is out there. Yeah. So, so a light worker is willing to see the darkness and then begin to transmute it and to transmute it. Sometimes we have to, um, experience whether for ourselves or for others, shame, guilt, anger, because those emotions have been repressed in us. And to move into enlightenment, we have to release those from our experience. We can't release without witnessing them fully, without being willing to see them fully. So in my mind, there's absolutely a way to do shame, guilt, anger, that is very high vibration. Just really wanted to share that with you. There's a very high vibrational experience of those things. It's all about your perspective and saying a blanket statement like shame and guilt is a low vibration thing. Yes, if you're in it all the time, but if you're experiencing it consciously to release it, then that's incredibly high vibration. So we have to understand that guidance is never one size fits all. We always want to be looking at unique guidance for our unique situation. And so if we are trusting what others have written for their unique situation or someone else's unique situation or a different time period on earth, even five years ago, is a very different time period on earth than now. Realize that as all of the thoughts on earth change, as the vibrations change on earth, the guidance coming to us as well as the gift and gifts and power available to us. It's all changing. It's all changing. That's not bad. And it doesn't make anyone who's given guidance at any point wrong. It just means everything's constantly changing. The more that we are willing to change, the more we experience our mag our magic. Change is actually this beautiful thing that we are designed to do that as humans, most of us are terrified to experience at all. If we can get comfortable with change, we can start really um, enveloping our magic, really embodying our magic. It's such an exciting time to be alive and yeah, there's stuff to work through. There's sadness. Like what? This, it's not the way that I thought it was. You're telling me the moon is a planet one spaceship. That's, that's not what I thought. You know, I mean, I am had told me a few years ago, 2020, early in 2020, that the moon was part of that, but I didn't really understand it, nor was I willing to share it. Um, And I'm also hearing right now that it is essentially, again, there's, I'm, I'm being told that there's more than one because it's not actually a moon and the way we have been taught a moon is it's actually, and it, there's, so there's multiple spaceships. Oh, it's 33, 33. Oh, we've been getting those 33, oh, 33 yeah. is like crazy. Oh, like 33, weird. 33, not weird. Oh, so cool. Like they're just <laughs> everywhere. Not weird at all. So freaking cool, babe. Yeah. And so listen to this. So Phil's like, like Aaron, you're creating it. So he's like, I'm just going to well, put my... That was my question. I'm like, are, are we getting these numbers? The numbers are just like... They're guidance. I'm whoa. not creating it. I'm... However, I am having gratitude every... At first, when I used to get numbers, it used to freak me out. I couldn't hold that magic. And I would be like, oh no. Or... I don't know if I trust this, but now every time I get a number, I'm like, thank you, thank you, thank you. I have incredible gratitude. I, I just, I train myself to do that. And so, yeah, the numbers are coming, but it's not just coming for me. What happened with yeah. you? Oh, I've been so getting freaking this crazy. Cool. Uh, well, the movie, I stopped the movie. We're watching a film and I stopped it and it stopped at one hour, one hour, 30 minutes. No, one hour, 33, 33, 33. 33. Yeah. And that's a few hours after I had been editing one of my videos and I stopped it at 33, 33. Yeah. And this is like, we're not, we have this no idea if it's one hour in or five, you know, like we, we aren't We're looking. just like, click, you know, yeah. and then we're noticing this one. Yeah. Whoa. And it's how all, the 30, the repeated threes are, we're getting so many of them. Have you been getting <laughs> repeated numbers? I don't know. If so, comment below. Also, let us know, do you still have mosquitoes? 
I want to know what's going on. Is it just and have you us? noticed the moon business? Have you noticed? So let us know. We are so interested. So tell it. Okay. Oh, the book. So, so I'm reading this book. It's a very long, it's very good. And it's very long. It's a 900 page book. And I have a, a page. What are they called? Bookmark. Bookmark. And, and I threw it in the kid's bag that we take everywhere. And when I grabbed it out, the bookmark came out. I was like, oh, I don't know what page I was on, you know? So, so I'm like, well, I'm just going to stick it in there so I don't lose the bookmark. So I stuck it in there. And then later I opened it up. I'm like, let's find my spot. And I was one page off from the page I was on. I was like, this is weird. It's a 900 page book. And I just randomly slipped it in there and just happened to be one page off from where it stopped. That was a little, I was telling Aaron about this, you know, I'm like, that's, what are the odds of that? That's the crazy odds. So then later, um, I'm trying to remember exactly what happened. So it happened again. It came out of the, of the book and I went to, and you, you were, were like, like oh, maybe yeah. Yeah, we thought we're like, you were going to okay. put it in the same spot. We're like, like maybe, right you maybe were. I could do it again. Because it came out like, maybe I can do the magic trick again. I can stick it in there. I'll be a page off or maybe, maybe it'll be right on this time. <laughs> so we do it. So we do it. And we open it up. And I'm like, oh, I'm nowhere near it this time. I'm on page 332. And she goes, no, you're not. You're on this page. She points to the next page. It's 333. I'm like, no. Oh, my God. You're reading threes again. And then so I'm reading my, my book. And I, I go to bed. You know, I'm reading the book before I go to bed and I look at the page that I'm on that I stopped on <laughs> and it's page 433. And I'm like, no, no way <laughs> again. <laughs> so I'm like, what is with this? <laughs> it's like, I don't know. What's pretty cool. It's pretty, There's yeah, some pretty, pretty cool, cool stuff going it's, on right yeah. now when we, when we open ourselves to it and, and allow ourselves to see it. So. It's been pretty wild over here. I cannot wait for our show next week. Is it going to be amazing? Yeah. What's next week? Well, I don't know. We didn't know it was yeah. going to be this week until we saw yeah, the moon business. Well, so something can, really yeah, cool, cool is probably going to come through yeah. again. Like we didn't know like four days ago that we were going to have this, this amazing conversation. Yeah. Or the number. The P3s. Yeah. Yeah. That's been, that's been pretty that's bad. Been, yeah. yeah. She's always about these numbers. And I'm like, eh, <laughs> you just, you're just looking for them. But now I'm like, okay, this is like. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Maybe we'll talk more yeah. about numbers next time. We'll All see. Right. We'll see what happens. We'll let's just trust what, that exactly what comes, what's so comes to, up. What happens? Yeah. 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 All right. Have a beautiful week, guys. We'll see you next week. Thank Goodbye. you. Goodbye.